So I am Federico Nanni and I'm a postdoc in Germany working at the University of Mannheim and I have a background in contemporary history. I did bachelor and master in Bologna studying history and then contemporary European history and then I did my PhD on historical research and methodology in historical research. So I started working on how to use web archives as historical sources. So web archives are large archives of the web so the web has been, has been archived since 1996 and so we have this large collection of information that was available online and I started asking myself how can we use this material in historical research. So it's a combination of you know, historical research in the sense of how to formulate a question, having this large corpora and at the same time how to develop tools that can allow us uh, to investigate over these large uh, collections. For example, I was working in a project on creating event collections. So you want to study, for example, the start of a protest like the Orange Revolution. How can you retrieve information regarding the Orange Revolution from the entire web in 2004? And that's fascinating because you have to develop new approaches and new methods because if you go by standard way so you just search for documents mentioning the orange revolution you might miss the early stages when there was already a protest but people were, were not calling it um, the orange revolution and things like this so i started learning how to program and how to combine digital tools and digital technologies with uh, traditional historical method and traditional ways of framing a research question Currently I'm focusing on working on parliamentary data and especially parliamentary data across different countries and, and uh, using different languages and based on different languages and especially on the identification of underlying topics. For example, recognizing when different politicians from different countries are speaking about the same topic and addressing similar issues. For example, they are talking about immigration and how the topic of immigration could emerge in a debate, for example, in the UK compared to how it, this emerges in a debate in Italy or in Germany or in Hungary, for example. And at the same time, the topic of European integration or topics of finance, for example, or the relation with the US. And so what I find fascinating is that you can use data from parliament, the parliaments and to compare the position of different parties and different politicians across different countries. And then you can do this kind of analysis at different levels because you can take national parliaments or data from the European Parliament and so compare the same position of the same parties in two different situations. So when they are addressing and discussing national issues and when they are in, for example, at the European level. In this situation you can use methodologies that are already established for example you can use topic models for understanding different topics or you can use standard methods for doing what is called text scaling or you can start developing your own method in order to allow more advanced analysis or that will fit best your research question for example and that's what I'm currently working on and what I will work on for the near next two to three years. Let's assume that what happens usually that you have a data set and then on that you would like to formulate a, an interesting research question. In that case, I mean there are many different ways. One thing that I usually find very useful is doing some data exploration. Taking the data set in, using for example topic models or using entity linking so detecting which are the entities mentioned in the data set trying to discover some pattern that and this pattern and the topics that you will find out doesn't it doesn't mean that these are the final answer this could be an initial hint on something that you can investigate and when you have identify something that could be interesting and that you want to move forward, then define again which are the methods that you want to employ, employ, which are the technologies that you are looking for, and what is the research question that you, are, that you want to investigate. So I usually imagine this and try to present, present it to my student as, like, as an iterative process. So you start having like an initial idea, you do a bit of exploration, you reformulate your idea, you go back, you change your tools, you change your method until you set up and say, okay, this is actually what I'm looking for to discover in my data set. Regarding infrastructure, uh, 
The first thing that comes to my mind is having more integration between the different resources that could be available and that could help researchers. For example, if you are working with parliamentary data, these are like, uh, this is a very useful resource but represents only the position of a specific elite, though, like politicians. And so it would be great if we can integrate the same resource with other resources representing the position of other elites, for example, the position of the media, and at the same time, the position of uh, common people. So take data from for example social media archives and so having different layers representing the same point in time and combining different resources together representing for example position of different actors in a political landscape and at the same time while we could need some this some one type of infrastructure like this another thing that comes to my mind is having tools that allow us to accelerate access easily the data sets that are available, especially if someone is coming from the humanities, we usually don't have so much expertise in specific data format and we mostly have maybe a bit of expertise in you know, writing a short script in Python. And so having something that is easily usable and maybe having resources for dissemination and explaining how to use data sets or for example, many people are using now these Jupyter Notebooks and so having resources like this that show in a couple of lines of code and a few snippets of code how to open a data set, how to parse the data set, how to get out some annotation or some metadata that you are looking for that will be extremely helpful and extremely useful for humanities researchers.